Good morning, Good Samaritan. And to all of our viewers in Facebook and YouTube land, we greet you in the joy of the Lord and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet Holy Spirit. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us this morning as we worship our Lord and Savior. Our announcements for this morning, there will be a membership, a church meeting of all church members on February 17th at 6 p.m. This will be a Zoom meeting. And if you've gotten on to Zoom um, for Bible study, it's the same Zoom number. And if you don't have it, please contact Trustee Carmen Battle, and she will make sure that you get the information that you need to log into the meeting. Also, there will be a virtual Black History program on February 21st. And if you're interested in participating, please contact our youth pastor, Reverend Joseph Taylor. This morning, our service will be as follows. We will have scripture and prayer by Reverend Robin Hamilton. Music will be rendered by the Mardella Scott Edwards Gospel Choir. And our pastor, Reverend Bruce Bias Sr. will bring us the message for this morning. We ask that you participate with us as we serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, good Samaritans. Good morning. I'll be coming uh, from 1 John, uh, the fourth chapter, starting at the seventh verse, and I'll read on down to the um, 15th verse. It said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifest, the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess Jesus is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him, and he in God. God's word for God's people. Let us pray. Most gracefully, Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, just to say thank you, God. Thank you for another day that we have yet to unfold, Father God. But God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Father, thank you for the food that you provided us with in a mighty way. Father, but before we go any further, Father God, we come asking for forgiveness, Lord, for anything said, done, contrary to you, that you may hear our prayer. Now, Father God, we ask you right now, for those who are in bereavement, God, comfort in a mighty way, Lord. Lift them up, Lord God. Lord, when they're torn down, Father God, build them up, Lord God. Father, for those who are sick, God, we ask right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you wrap your arms around them, Father God. Lord, give them that healing spirit that they are in need of, Lord God. Father, we just thank you, God. Lord, we magnify you in a mighty way, oh Lord. Lord, we ask you right now, as we go into the service, Father God, we ask that you give Zion songs to, to the choir, Father God, that will lift, lift you up, Father God. Father, we ask right now, Father, to bless our pastor and his family, Father God. Bless him, Lord, as he come up and give your word, Father God, that somebody may hear your word, Father God. Somebody may be delivered and somebody may be set free by that very word, Lord God. God, we just thank you, God. God, we just magnify you in a mighty way. So, Lord, we lift you up right now in this service. Let your spirit reign, rule, and abide in this service right now. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask these things, your humble servants, in prayer. Amen. Amen, amen. 
Amen.
Savior Jesus Christ, amen, who is the head, I pray, of our lives, amen. Hallelujah. First giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, amen, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who hung, lived, and died on Calvary, amen, to the Holy Ghost, our comforter, teacher, and guide, amen, we greet you with a holy kiss, amen. amen. Hallelujah. We want to acknowledge this wonderful and outstanding choir, amen, for Amen. Rendering the works, amen. Using their gifts to glorify God and set an atmosphere in his house, amen. We certainly want to acknowledge our musicians, amen, who are so, amen, as studious, amen, as they continue to play, amen, uh, the, the songs of Zion, amen. And we want to recognize our media ministry, amen, who allows us to live stream and to make sure that the voices are heard as they go outside of this building, amen. We want to acknowledge, amen, our deacons, our deaconesses, amen, our trustees, amen, and our ushers, and all of the wonderful ministries that make up the family, our family here at the Missionary, the Missionary Baptist Church, the ministerial staff, amen, for their prayers and their teaching, amen, their availability as servants of the Most High God, amen. And if you haven't tuned in, amen, we want you to take a moment, an opportunity, amen, to visit our website, amen. You can find it at GSNBC. Uh, dot com, amen, and there you'll be able to find a little bit more about us, amen, as we continue to reach outside the walls of the church and as a mandate, amen, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, go ye therefore teach all nations baptizing in the name of the Father yes. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and so we're trying to leave a footprint for Jesus, amen, outside the walls of the church, amen. amen. Also want you to know that this is a praying time, and so we solicit your prayers, amen, amen, as we as a children of God are constantly under attack, amen. We want to acknowledge, amen, First Lady Bias, amen, God bless you, amen. You know, I love you, girl, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen, thank <laughs> God, all right, amen. All right. Hallelujah, amen. hallelujah, amen. hallelujah, amen. And so we do thank God for the privilege and opportunity 
set before us today that we might share with you the word of God. Amen. I pray I haven't left anyone out. We also want to acknowledge our church mother, my mother, Annie. Uh, may God, amen, and pray her strength in Christ Jesus as all our seniors, amen, and those who are sick and bereaved, praying for healing, blessing, and deliverance, amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, amen, we would that you turn to the book of First Peter and find the fourth chapter. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, we'll be reading today from the King James Version of the Bible, amen, and we pray, hallelujah, amen, that you have your Bibles with you, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, 1 Peter chapter 4, amen, and we would that you rest on verse number 12, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, we do solicit your prayers, amen. Hallelujah. And for those that can stand, amen, we would that you stand. If you need to remain seated, by all means, please do so, amen. First Peter chapter 4, amen, beginning at verse 12. These are the words in which you'll find, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it began with us first, amen, what shall be the end to them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteousness, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Our last verse. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in doing well, amen, as unto a faithful creator. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you for being our creator, our redeemer, and our savior. Father, you keep making a way out of no way. And the least we can keep doing is saying thank you. We thank you, Father, for this morning's rising up and last night's laying down. We thank you, Father, for your hand being upon our lives and allowing us to see yet another day. As we come into this day, God, we acknowledge you, knowing, oh God, that we can do nothing without you. But with God, all things are possible. As so, our Father, now is your child, I ask that you get me down in the storehouse of God. That you would anoint these lips of clay. Yes. That I might preach your word and preach it with power, clarity, simplicity, and accuracy. Yes. And by the power of your Holy Spirit. Yes. I likewise pray, O oh God, as a result of your anointing and the preaching of your word and submission and obedience to you. That you would touch the ears, the eyes, the heart, and the minds of your people. Yes. That they might be enlightened, edified, and empowered to do thy most holy will. Now, Father, I pray, have your way. Show up and show out. Yes, Lord. Do that which only you can. Yes, Lord. Yes, Set our hearts on fire. Yes, that our minds and our bodies would follow in righteousness to do your will. And in the midst of all you do, yes. oh, Heavenly Father, we'll be ever so careful, ever so humble to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For it is in the match, listen, wonderful name of Jesus, we do pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you. For the next few moments that is ours to spend together in this house, I want to talk from the thought, why must the church go through? Why must, why must the church go through? Come on now. As I say these words and ponder them in my heart, it lets me know that we're in a time of chaos and confusion. A time wherein the children of God are under attack. You need to understand that in this attack, it doesn't come as a frontal assault. But the Bible tells us that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, 
and to destroy. Uh -huh. Oftentimes disguising himself as an angel of light. Come on. And if the devil disguises himself as an angel of light, what about his ministry? I say that to say this, brothers and sisters, that controversy and trials will come in your life. Come on. As a child of God, if you're walking in righteousness, you need to remember the words of Jesus. They hate you because they first hated him. Ah. I'm trying to help somebody. I say that, brothers and sisters, because at the time of this writing, Peter uh, uh, wants to warn the church that they are in a time called persecution. They're being persecuted from on the outside. Uh, wolves have tried to creep in, amen, among the sheep of God, amen, and masquerade themselves. Uh, and when in reality all they're doing mm -hmm, is trying to penetrate, gain information, find a foothold so they can assault you. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, you need to know as a child of God that there are wolves that have climbed into the sheepfold. Some that have come to do nothing but spread trouble. When Peter writes this epistle, he is writing to warn the church of such persecution that is yet to come. And brothers and sisters, I think it's an appropriate text because right now, today, the church is under persecution. Yeah. All you got to do is mention the name of Jesus, and the first thing they do is tell you there should be a separation of church. Come on, somebody, yeah. and stay. Isn't it funny that they want what God put together separated? You see, if there was no God, there would be no state. I'm trying to help somebody. But, 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 but they're in a location. Mm -hmm. The emperor is now Nero. Nero is the emperor, and Nero wants to rebuild the city. He, he, he comes into this historic place where all their monuments, all their statues and idols of their false gods are. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Mm -hmm. And he wants to rebuild it, but, but they're enamored by the city. They're proud of the statues. They're proud. Oh, God, don't that just sound like us? Amen. Wasn't it just not that long ago when we were trying to tear statues down, huh? Burn, take, take certain types of flag. Y'all ain't gonna help me in there. Uh, and all kinds of folks started raising hell. It's history. Well, it's the wrong kind of history. Right. Nero wanted to rebuild Rome, but he couldn't rebuild Rome because Rome had already been built. And so Nero decided that by night he would have some folk go out and tear down the city. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when they woke up in the morning, come on somebody, and they saw their beloved Rome was no longer what it was, they got angry. And rather than Nero being a man, I wish y'all helped me in here, he stood up as a coward. And the first person he rolled under the bus was the Christians. And as a, a result of him rolling the Christians under the bus, saying that they were the one that tore up their beloved Rome, they found themselves being uh, uh, poured pitch on them, amen, lit them on fire and had them running through the imperial garden. People were turned to human torches because uh -huh, they simply were trying to do that which was right. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you do that which is right, persecution shall come. But the sad reality is uh, we live in a world today, amen, that calls wrong right mm -hmm, and calls right wrong. But here's what's even worse. Rather than the church setting itself apart from them, we've learned how to blend in with them. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm trying to say it's a terrible state of reality when the church begins to look like the world. I'm going somewhere. And sadly, brothers and sisters, uh, we want the world to look at us. We want the world to emulate us. We want the world to look forward to us. But in reality, every time trouble comes, yeah. Rather than standing on the promises of God, we do like they do when we turn to man. Let me keep this out for a moment. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had one of the biggest elections there was. We didn't have many prayer services to see who God might have wanted in there. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I, I get this. I'm not trying to talk about your politics or anything like that. But what I am saying is every one of us was pulling for a man. Rather than pulling for God. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, the, 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 the real church, those that are rooted in Christ, <laughs> when trouble comes, they have a way, don't say, we'll say, hold to his hand, mm -hmm. to God's unchanging hand. The old church knew how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. But, but, but not the modern day church. You see, the modern day church can't stand much pressure. The, the modern day church can't stand being called names. The modern day church can't stand being left on an island all by themselves because they need a spotlight. They need a limelight. They need some attention. They need a sense of belonging. I'm trying to help somebody. Mm -hmm. 
You see, we, we, we live in a church today where we love to, cute, to, to quote those cute sayings in the Bible. Bless going out, come on somebody, and bless coming in. We would much rather our churches be like TV shows where uh -huh, we have uh, we find ourselves on islands greeted by hosts that are wearing white. Y'all ain't talking to me. Mm -hmm. That when the plane lands and we get out, somebody says, welcome to Fantasy Island. That, that, that's the kind of church we want. But I came out here to tell somebody that the only Fantasy Island is on TV. I'm trying to help somebody. Because if you are a child of God and you're doing it right, you will suffer persecution. All right. And so Peter... Write this epistle mm -hmm, to let the, the Christians know that they need to brace for impact that hard times are coming. Yeah. You see, if you're a child of God, I submit to you, trouble is going to come your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when trouble comes, you, you need to have an answer, a remedy for how you stand. Yeah. You see, the church is supposed to be the bride of Christ. It's herald as being his own. And those that make it up are to walk by faith. Come on, somebody. Come on. And not by sight. Yeah. Sadly, we look to systems rather than looking to God. And the one thing that you've never been promised in this life as a child of God, that this walk is going to be easy. And brothers and sisters, too many times we have joined the, the body of Christ not understanding what it really is. You see, as a child of God, you are to represent Christ in all that you do. Uh -huh. Everything we do ought to give glory to God. When we sing, it ought to give glory to God. When we teach, it ought to give glory to God. When we walk down the street, it ought to give glory to God. And I submit to you, brothers and sisters, one of the things that the church is failing to do is to give glory unto God. You see, we're so concerned about walking in somebody else's shadow. Let me stop there. You see, God is building a church without spot or wrinkle. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all ain't going to shout today. I already know, but it's okay. God is building a church without spot and wrinkle. And he's coming back for that church. He's coming back for that church. And don't you get it twisted. Not every church is going to be qualified. And brothers and sisters ask, God is building his church. We've got to lay aside this thing, this foolishness called pride. Whereby we come into the house of God talking about what I want and I will and my thing is and us ought to do this. Rather than consulting God. I'm going to win. And so Peter wants us to understand it's okay to walk in the shadows of those that do right. After all, the Bible says unto us, he that dwells, come on somebody, in the secret place of the Most High, here it is, shall abide under the what? Under the shadow of the Almighty. We ought not be concerned about where we walk so long as we're walking with God and God gets glory. So why, brother preacher, must the church go through? And I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. And I'm equally glad for those of you that tuned in. For if anything is true of today, we are simply living in troubled times. Yes. God has a word for such times as this. Yes. And the answer for the church is this time, in this time of time of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, we can find the answer right here in God's word. Yes. But before I tell you why the church must go through, I need to tell you how. The church must go through. Uh, number one, amen, the church ought to go through glad and with exceeding joy. It's right there in verse 13. Yeah. Secondly, we ought to go through with Christ-like integrity. It's in verse 15. And finally, the reason uh -huh, the church must go through is because judgment will start at the house of God. The house of God. Yes, sir. Here we go. Point number one, with gladness and Exceeding joy. Hear the words of Peter who understands that no servant is greater than his master. Peter says, but rejoice in that you are partakers of the suffering of Christ. Peter suggests that when we suffer for righteousness sakes, we are identified with Christ. And brothers and sisters, I can't think of one higher praise as a child of God than to be recognized as a child of God. Not by the world, but by him. What Peter wants us to know is that when the light of Christ shines in our life, you'll be hated by the world, and thus that's a sign that you're doing it right. They hate you because when they see you, they see Jesus, and as they see Jesus, amen, all they want to do is stone him all over again. I'm going somewhere. Uh-huh. As they desire to crucify him, 
They'll desire to crucify you. That's why it troubles me when we come to the house of God and so-called saints fight among themselves. Always plotting and scheming how to get what they want done. Sliding something under the table. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, brothers and sisters, being a child of God does not mean that we do things underhanded and in dark rooms and midnight hours. But if you're a child of God, whatever you do can be done in the light. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, oh God, I, uh, help me, Lord. Peter says, when you go through we are partakers in Christ's suffering. And when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad, here it is, with exceeding joy. Why? Because the spirit of glory and God rests on you. And brothers and sisters, if there's anything you want to want as a child of God, you ought to want the spirit of God and his glory to rest on you. That when you open your mouth, when you pray for the sick, when you minister to those who are hurting and downtrodden, that God hears your word and moves because you're his child. I'm trying to help somebody. Number two, we ought to mm -hmm, go through with the integrity of Christ. Peter says, don't get it twisted. Just because you're going through is not necessarily meaning you're automatically identified with Christ. Come on now. You see, as a preacher, I pray for a whole lot of folk that have walked to the front of the church. Oh, well, you just don't know. I'm going through. But what they fail to tell you is they're going through because they ain't doing right. I'm trying to help somebody. It's right there in the text. Y'all don't believe me? He said, when you go through, don't go through as a murderer. Come on, somebody. Or as a busybody or as an evil person. Come on, somebody. He, he's saying, when you go through, let it be because you was doing the will of God. And too many times we do our underhanded, conniving stuff, and when it catch up with us, the first place we run, Church. It's to the church. I need you to pray for me. Perhaps if you were doing right, you wouldn't need so much prayer. I'm trying to help somebody. Sometimes our, our trouble is a direct consequence of the choices that we made. So Peter says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busy busybody in other men's matters. Look at what the text says. It says, count it among the category of evil is those that don't know how to mind their own business. Ah. Right there in your Bible. Yeah. Got your nose in somebody else's stuff. Right. And then you want to know why your house falling apart. Right. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. Peter says, sometimes your suffering are the result of your actions. You deserve what you get. That's not suffering for Christ, brothers and sisters. That's suffering because we went against God's word. Yes. Peter says, if a man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Well, Here it is. Our sufferings ought not be because we broke the law, but because we walk with Jesus. We honored God. Yes. We walked in his will. Yes. We kept his word. Yes. We let the light of God shine that men might see our good works yes. and glorify our Father which is in heaven. If you steal, Peter said, that's on you. If you commit murder, that's on you. If you're a nosy person, that's on you. And if you suffer because you're a busybody, that's on you. But Jesus suffered because he did the will of the Father. And I want to ask you, Good Samaritan Missionary Baptist Church, when is the last time you did the will of the Father? When, when we suffer, it ought to be because we live our lives as people who walk with the integrity of Christ. Not as those who bring shame to God and the word of God. Busybody, minding other people's businesses is not what Christians do. But rather, we ought to walk as Jesus walked. We ought to talk as Jesus talked. We ought to do as Jesus did. To suffer as a Christian means to suffer because we look so much like him. That when they look at us, all they can see is him. Come on. It means that they, they feel guilty in our presence. What are you saying, preacher? I'm trying to say when you're walking in the will of God and reflecting the glory of God in your life, when you become around sinners, they stop cussing. When, 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 when they're telling dirty jokes, they stop telling them. But if they feel comfortable telling dirty jokes around you, I submit to you, you need to look at your own life. I'm trying to help somebody. But finally, brothers and sisters, as I look at the text, 
There's one more question to be asked and one more point to be made. Why must the church suffer? And I submit to you that the text tells us because judgment shall start at the house of God. Yes. Lest we forget that we have an adversary running around as a roaring lion, yes. seeking whom he may devour. Uh -huh. He is an accuser of the brethren. One that points his finger at us and looks up towards heaven and says, God, they're committing the same sins I'm committing. How is it that you let them into heaven? And the one thing that you need to know about this God that we serve is not only is he a holy God, but he's also a just God. Yeah. A God that cannot look on sin and, and just leave it as it is. And so the first thing that God does as any other person ought to do. And before you begin to judge those that are outside the church, come on somebody, yeah. God begins to sweep around his own front door and he begins to judge those that are in the house of God. I'm going somewhere. Yeah. He says those that are alive that are in the house of God, he will begin to speak to them. Those that have committed murder in the house of God, God will begin to speak to them, talk to them, preach them. Yeah. You remember uh, one of those beloved shepherds uh -huh, that uh, walked after God's own heart by the name of David. David had committed murder. David had lied and cheated. But God wouldn't let David get away with it. God sent the prophet by the name of Nathan to David. And he told David, he said, there was a certain man that had one new lamb. Uh -huh. And he wanted to feed the other man mm -hmm, that he was trying to help. The Bible says, uh-huh, that rather than him feeding from the pastor of his abundance, he went to the field of the man that had one ewe lamb, and he, he killed his ewe lamb and fed the man. And David, uh-huh, hearing it, said, this man surely deserves to die. I'm going somewhere. And David had the courage and an unmitigated dog to look him in the eye of the servant of God. And he said, David, you the man. In other words, when we as children of God sin, God loves us so much that he chases us. He gives us a chance to get it right. That we might be brought back by him into the sheepfold. That there can be no charge hurled against us. I'm going somewhere. Uh -huh. And because God is just God, starts to sweep around his own front door. You see, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that the reason the church must go through is because the church mm -hmm, must be separated from the world. Because the one thing that the world does not have and the church ought to always have is a thing called faith. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing like trouble to determine how much faith you have. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, when trouble comes, it's just like roaches. You turn on the light and everybody begins to stir it. But those that have the faith of God will stand still, come on somebody, and see what the end is going to be. They'll know how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because they learn to trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding. They recognize that trouble may come on every side, that the walls of life may close in every now and then, that controversy may rise, but I'm a hold on and I'm a trust in God. Though he's slain, come on somebody, get what I trust him, I'm going somewhere. But what makes you a child of God is not uh, your title, not your position, not how many days you came into the church, not uh, what your function is in the church. What makes you a child of God is your faith. And God knows that we need trouble mm -hmm, to prove our faith. Yeah. Uh -huh, the Bible says that if you faint in the day of adversity, little is your strength. I'm trying to help somebody. You see, when trouble comes, you're going to either run to God or you're going to run to the world. I'm trying to help somebody. And one thing that I found out that I want more than anything else is I want to be a pastor, I want to be a member, I want to be a servant among the saints of God that don't mind serving God. I want to come to the house of faith. I want prayer lifted up. I want to be around them that have like-minded faith, that know, that know how to call on the name of Jesus. That in times of trouble, in times of gloom and despair, we can stand up and testify for God I live. Come on, somebody. And for God, I die. The church is to be a light. It's to give off illumination, to give revelation and insight of what it looks like to be used by and to be guided by God. When trouble comes, rather than doing it man's way, we like Jesus can get in the boat and when the winds of controversy begin to blow, we can still have peace in our lives. We can still bless God at all times. And his praises shall continually be in our mouth. We can 
still praise his name. We can still come to church. I can't tell you how many times folk have told me the reason I'm not coming to church is because I'm going through. But I submit to you, that's all the more reason you ought to go through. Uh, David said, when I, if I could just get uh, into his presence, I wish I had a witness in here. He said, there's joy in the Lord's house. There's peace in the Lord's house. There's deliverance in the Lord's house. Here it is, brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of a young man that went by the name of Joseph. You know Joseph? Joseph was envied by his brothers. He began to share what his many blessings was, and Joseph had done no wrong. But because Joseph was a child of God, the first thing they did was they threw Joseph in a pit. They left Joseph laying there for dead. And to make bad matters worse, here come another group that grabs Joseph out of the pit, takes him to a far country, a hard delivers him to a man by the name of Potiphar. There he's relegated to working in Potiphar's house. He's a child of God, but he's got trouble on every hand. And then it still gets worse. Every time he gets a promotion, it seems like he gets knocked back down. He takes two one step forward, and it seems like he takes two steps back. I'm trying to help somebody. But Joseph and Joseph, and Joseph doesn't say a mumbling word. It goes from bad to worse. He goes from serving uh, Potiphar to now being locked up in prison. But I submit to you, the Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've got to know I've got to have in my day of trouble. I need to know that I've got a God that still sits high, but is willing to look low. Yeah. A God that will meet me in the midst of my despair and my turmoil. Joseph that then gets a chance to be confronted by his brothers. Y'all ain't gonna pray for me. And rather than telling them off, Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. The only time you can say that is when God has been on your side, when you've been rooted and grounded in him, when you put your hope and trust in him, when you know that God is yet able to bring you out. But can I go further? Let us look no further than our Savior. We're told in the Baptist church he came down through 140 and two generations. He was wounded by our transgressions, bruised by our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. I wish I had a witness in here. Uh -huh. The Bible says, though he made of himself no reputation, uh -huh. he took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Uh -huh. He was despised of men. Uh -huh, and rejected uh, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh, we hid ourselves from the faces from him. Uh, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Uh, surely he was born our grief and carried our sorrow sorrows. Uh, yet we esteemed him smitten and stricken of God and afflicted. Uh, here it is, brothers and sisters, but I want you to know uh, he did it because he loves God and he loves us. Uh, and I want you to know, brothers and sisters, in this time of trouble, yeah. the church ought to be a refuge, it ought to be a safe place where the weak, where the weary can come in and they can find safe haven. I wish I had some help in here, but how was the church going to be a safe haven when it's raising more hell in the world? I'm trying to help somebody. But I came by here to tell you the church must go through because when we stand on the precious promises of God, folk will begin to know that our God still lives. That God's not dead, he's still alive. That he's still got all power in his hands. Yeah. That he's still the wonder of our soul. That he can give us joy in our sorrow. That he can raise us up in our midnight hour. I wish I had a witness in here. Is there anybody in here that can testify? Yeah. Uh -huh, that trouble won't last always. Because God knows how to open doors that no man can shut. And he can shut doors that no man can open. When we're in the storms of life, he can speak for the word, peace, be still. And the waves of controversy have to stop waving in our life. I wish I had some help in here. Why must the church go through? Because there must be a separation of the sheep and the goat. I wish I had some help in here. Why must the church go through? Because you can't pretend and make your way into heaven. You've got to go through something every now and then so you can give a real testimony. Brother, man, no great testimony that draws attention from God and gives attention to you. I wish I had some help in here. Why must the church go through? Because no servant is greater than his master. And if we're going to be children of God, we need to know that the world hates us. Not because we are in of the world, but because we're in the world. And brothers and sisters, here's what I want you to rest your hat on. That no matter what you go through, God has a blessing with your name on.
morning that one of these old days when it seems like the lights grow dim in your life and you seem like you've got nowhere else to go that God has a place reserved in heaven that nobody can take from you that's why the old church you ought to clap glad hands and say this joy that I have the world didn't give it to me the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away I wish I had a witness in here that can stand up and testify with glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away have a one witness in here that can say sign me up for the Christian Jubilee I, I know I've been changed because the angels in heaven done sign my name why must the church go through so that we can let the light of Christ shine that men might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven That's all right. you see if everybody's running in a time of trouble nobody will know which way to run but when they see that you got a confidence and a steadfastness in your time of trouble they'll begin to wonder what you got and they don't got and God will open a door for you to witness for him like you've never witnessed before and I love what the gospel says. It says you should be brought before judges and magistrates. But take no thought of what you're going to say. For in that self-same hour, I'll give you what to say. What are you saying, preacher? I'm trying to say if even if you think you don't know how to witness, if you walk humbly and faithfully with God, when God opens the door for you to minister, it'll be like God is talking himself. See, you don't have to worry about all of the hermeneutics and all the apologetics and all of the all, all, all of the, all the theological terms that we use. Just simply give them Jesus. Yeah. When I see Jesus. Yeah. Hey, amen. When I see the one that died. Yeah, amen. When I see the one that does for me. Yeah. When I see Jesus, yeah. amen. There'll be no heartaches over there. Amen. That's all right, baby. There'll be no doctor feels over there. Yeah. With your name on it and eyes, you got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Everybody standing, everybody standing. Everybody standing, everybody standing. The doors of the church are open. Maybe there's one who, after hearing the word of God, has been convicted in their heart. Their walk with God has not been what it should be. That as children of God, we don't murmur and complain when we go through. We just draw closer to him. Yeah. And he said, I'll draw nigh to you. And then if there's one man who does not know that if the Lord was to come today off, they would have drive down the street and be in an accident and lose their lives. That they would lift up their eyes in heaven. If you don't know him that way, as the one that raises up the dead, that one that sits on the right hand of God the Father, who humbly and died on Calvary's cross, that we might have a right to the truth of life. We simply want you to come. We want you to come. Amen. If you're out there in streaming land and you're struggling with your walk in the Lord, I want to encourage you today because God doesn't want you going to me. But he says, they that wait upon the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Hold on. Help is on the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us close with a closing prayer. Father in Jesus' name, how we thank you for your Holy Spirit and the power of your word. May it continue to minister to our hearts and 
cause us to look in the mirror, oh God, and to take an honest look at who we are and how we're living our lives. And then, Father, when you, as only you can, reveal to us that our walk is contrary to your will, help us to be mindful enough to submit to you, to fall down on our knees and to repent, and to ask you to cleanse us from the inside out. I pray now, God, as your humble servant, that you would minister to these, your people, O oh God, that we might walk in the way of righteousness and that our salvation will be a sure foundation, not just a crap sheet hoping that we got it right, but trusting and depending on the, on the finished work of Jesus Christ, that we might be grafted into your family and be called the sons and daughters of God. I pray now, God, for those who are hurting and those who are going through bereavement, those who lost loved ones, uh, on this journey seemingly by themselves. Remind them, oh God, that they're never alone as children of God. For you said you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Then I pray, Father, as we leave this place with no eyes your presence, that you encamp your angels round about us. Keep us safe from danger. See as well as unseen. Help us to do right, oh God, that you might be glorified in us, through us and by us. In the midst of all you do, God, you be never so careful of us, oh God. To give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For it is in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Remember, as always, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen. Here at the Good Samaritan Mission at the Baptist Church, we believe in building the church through the people by the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.